This is going to be a challenging, long, sweaty flow sequence. And we're going to peek at standing poses of twists and lead up to a bunch of yummy backbends. And today we have Breton with us and Popo. And Popo's going to do a bunch of modifications. So if you're newer to this kind of type of practice or level or even to backbends, keep an eye on Popo. And we're going to start in child's pose. So big toes touch, have your knees a few inches apart. And let's start with very active arms. So look up for a moment. Make sure your hands are shoulder width apart. And then place the forehead back down and press into the hands and let your arms get nice and straight. So see if you can root into the hands and feel a little bit of a lift happening from your forearms as the upper arms firm in. And then finding just the pressure point where your forehead's down on the mat. And start to relax and soften the muscles in your face. We'll be here for around another 20 seconds. So this really is going to be the one moment to find stillness. And so start to cultivate your breathing. So start ujjayi breath in and out through the nose. We know we do this each time we come onto the mat, but sometimes it's the hardest part to just stop and focus on breath and the poses. So just start to let go of all your to-do lists and things that are on your plate. So all your attention is drawn inward. And then on your next inhale, come up onto all fours. Separate your feet hips width apart. A couple cat-cow breaths to move the spine. Let these just feel yummy. So as you inhale, pull the sternum through the gates of your arms. Feel that melting of the spine. As you exhale, press the hands and round the upper body. Inhaling, sternum lengthens, arms stay straight. Exhale, root the hands evenly, and then just the whole upper back gets to round. And then three more times, just flow with the breath. Inhale, a little spreading of your collarbones. Exhale, a little firmer in the arms as you draw in and up. Inhale, remember the softness of the face you just had a moment ago in child's pose. Keep that the whole practice. Exhale, round. And then one more time, big breath in. Drink in a little bit more. Really lift the sternum. And then exhale, round everything. When you're empty of breath, pause. And then come back to a nice neutral spine. Curl your toes, lift your hips, press back to downward facing dog. And let's start to move a bit. Pedal your feet back and forth, bend the knee, melt the opposite heel down. Keep the breath very streaming and fluid. And then put a nice little bend in both of your knees and get your hips to lift way up and back. So root the hands, keep the arms very straight and dynamic and just stretch the hips up to the back of the room. So you feel a little bit more elongation in each vertebrae of your spine. And then any amount, draw the tops of the thighs back so the legs begin to straighten. Take a stretch from the calves to your heels. Give your toes a little spread. And let's start moving. On your next inhale, shift forward to plank pose, top of a push-up. And I want you to make sure the shoulders are over the wrists, but then just paying more attention to your legs. So draw the inner thighs straight up to the ceiling. And complement that at the same time just with the tailbone and buttock flesh releasing back towards your heels. And then firm the upper arms, stretch your heels back a little more, and now pull the top of the sternum forward just like you did in the cat cow a moment ago. Excellent. Take two more breaths. Keep the navel gently drawing up to the back waist. And then downward facing dog. Pull it back. Hips up and back. And again, inhale. Shift forward to plank pose, top of a push-up. Now this time, shift a little more forward. Keep the legs that active and come into Chaturanga. Shoulders in line with the elbows. Keep the shoulder heads on the back. Keep the elbows drawing to the center line. And then from the legs and your core, go back up to plank. Inhale. Beautiful. Exhale. Hips up and back to downward facing. And then shift forward to plank. Top of a push-up. Inhale. And as you exhale, come into Chaturanga. Pause. Empty your whole breath out. And lower yourself all the way down. Uncurl your toes. Bring your feet together. Have your arms reach in front of you. And have your palms facing down. And then lift your right leg up a little bit. Lift your left arm up. And now have the palm facing your left cheek. Lift your head up. And pause. I want you to get your right leg to feel very long and straight. And then let go of how high it is. It doesn't have to go high. Have your left arm try to lift a little bit higher by your ear. Just a little bit more. And breathe here. Feel the length and stretch of the right leg. The wrapping of your left tricep. A little lift of your sternum. Take one more breath. You should feel this in the little bit of the back muscles. And then softly place it down. 
palm goes flat. And then come right back up to the other side. Lift your left leg up, right arm up, head up, palm faces the cheek, and breathe. So get the back leg nice and long. And even here, there's a spiraling of the inner thigh, a lengthening of the tailbone. And then wrap your outer right arm in. Keep the back of the neck soft, just like Breton is. Lift your sternum a little more. Take one more breath and place it down. Ah, oh, low cobra. So walk your hands back, bend your elbows. Separate your feet hips width apart. Now I want you to keep your feet on the mat, but engage your legs so they feel very straight. And as you inhale, lift your chest up. So I'm just kind of warming up the back muscles, not so much of a back bend as the muscles surrounding the spine getting a little stronger. Now, see if you can lift your hands up off the mat. Breathe. Excellent. She's making this look pretty easy. It's actually much more challenging than it looks. Two more breaths like this. Keep the back of the neck soft, shoulder heads up, and then place your forehead down. Place your hands down. Walk your hands back a tiny bit. Curl your toes under. Engage your legs. So have your knees off the mat. Now, pin your elbows in and lift those shoulder heads up onto the back. Take a smooth breath in. Chaturanga. Exhale. Go for it. Even if nothing happens, inhale to plank. Nice. Exhale. Pull it back. Downward facing dog. And walk your hands back to your feet. Take a forward fold. And let's interlace the hands behind the back. Go into the shoulders a bit more. So reach your arms up and over. Put a little bend in your knees if you need to. And take a moment to... Just reconnect to breath. So the key to the practice is what you do and how you do it. So you want to move from a place that's about breathing, dropping inside, and letting go of all the stuff and distractions we're typically engaged with off this rectangle, off the mat. Place your hands onto your hips. And with a flat back inhale, come up to standing. And step to the front of your mat. Let's do some sun salutes to build some heat. So feet together, arms by your side. Turn the palms to face up. Then on a deep breath in, reach your arms up overhead. Keep the arms nice and straight. As you exhale, hinge at the hip, forward fold. As you inhale, come onto your fingertips. Feel the spine get a little longer. And then step back to plank pose for the first one, top of a push-up. Pause here. Gauge the inner thighs up, tailbone to the heels, chaturanga, exhale the breath. And then come into upward facing dog. We're going to hold for around three breaths, shoulders right over the wrists, good legs very straight and engaged. And then lift the top of your sternum up a little more. Beautiful. Pull it back to downward facing dog. Pick a gazing point. Take three smooth, almost drinks of breath. Keep the hands evenly pressing. Keep your arms nice and straight. Keep those hips rising up. And then please look forward. At the end of your breath cycle, step or jump feet to hands. As you inhale, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, forward fold. Press the feet. Inhale, come up to standing. Big stretch at the top. And then exhale, hands to the heart or to your side. Surya A, inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Feel the sternum lift up. And then your choice, step or lightly jump. These guys might step back for a while or not. Inhale, upward facing, wide collarbone, straight legs. Beautiful. Exhale, pull it back to downward facing. And breathe. I want you to wrap your upper arms in. And at the same time, whole hand presses. See if you can lift your sternum up. Excellent. Then stretch the hips up and back. Look forward. Step or lightly float. Feet to hands. Inhale, lengthen, keep the breath flowing. Exhale, fold. Press your feet, come on up to standing. Inhale, stretching, looking up. Exhale, releasing. Two more times. Inhale, arms rise up. Notice the movement. Exhale, fold. Notice what's opening and strengthening. Look up, inhale, melt the shoulders, step or jump back on the exhale. And then a deep breath into up dog, lift up into the sternum. Pull it back to down dog. And this time, work the legs a little more. As you keep the arms firm and the hips up, tops of the thighs back. And then as you inhale, stretch it all back. As you exhale and empty, look where you want to go. Step or jump. Right into the next breath, lengthen, breathe in. And then fold, breathe out. Salute the feet. Inhale, rise up. Keep the navel slightly engaged as you reach. Exhale, release, and we do one more. Inhale, arms reach up. 
Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for length, gaze slightly ahead. Exhale, step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog. And exhale to downward facing dog. Lifting your right leg up and back behind you. Open it up, bend it, and stretch it out. Make little circles, stretch out, do whatever feels good. And then straighten your leg, square your hips, and shift forward to plank pose top of a push-up. For a moment, draw the knee to the nose and just take a few deep breaths, rounding the spine. So we rarely get these moments of rounding the spine. Firm the arms, let the whole mid and upper back round. And then look between your hands, gently step the foot forward. Walk it a little bit to the right. And then pin that right hip in, stamp the right heel, and come on up to crescent pose. Inhale the arms up. So keep your front leg nice and bent, 90 degrees. Focus on the balance, which is the heel and the connection of the hip firming in. And as you bend into it, put a little gentle bend in your back leg. And I want you to start to lean your torso back. Feel how that lifts your hip points up. And at the same time, she's softening her front ribs in. And then she's going to get the height of the pose by really reaching the arms and letting her back ribs rise up, letting her sternum bone lift up. Arms are beautifully wrapped. And now start to straighten your back leg. And can you pull that left hip a little forward as you straighten the back leg? We're here for three more breaths. Check in with the smoothness of the breath. Don't let it get choppy, even if the posture is demanding. Start to lift your sternum higher, maybe the gaze. If you want to challenge the balance, palms touch. Gently hands to the mat and pause. Be on your fingertips, gaze ahead. Take a deep breath, long spine. Exhale, send your right arm up, stack your shoulders. And breathe. So pay a little more attention to the bottom arm. Make sure that shoulder is not collapsing towards your ear. Wrap the tricep back and bring your bicep forward. And then reach your top arm a little bit higher. Look down and keep this shoulder as it is. Step into Vashistasana, sidearm plank. So stack your feet. Stack your hips, flex your feet. And find what we did in plank pose before. Press the inner thighs back, and at the same time, reach the buttocks and the tailbone towards your heels. And then, pay attention to the bottom arm again. Wrap that tricep back, bicep forward. And this time, reach your top arm overhead. We're gonna wrap that whole upper arm in. Now check in with the breath, even if the body's a little shaky. Have the breath smooth and even. And then slowly, float your right arm up. Look down, come into plank pose, top of a push-up. Pause here. So I like these. They're called reverse vinyasas. So you're going to come right into up dog. Drop the hips and curl the toes. Take two breaths. Really open your chest, expand your lungs. And then come into chaturanga. As you exhale, two breaths, shoulders on the back, strong, straight legs. Awesome. Plank inhale, press up. Down dog, exhale, pull it back. <sighs> Step your feet a little closer. Lift your left leg up and get out of the way. Open it up, bend it, and stretch it out. Any variations that what you feel like you're stretching. And then straighten the leg, square the hips, shift forward, plank top of a push-up, knee to nose, simply rounding and engaging the core a little bit more. Remember those muscles that we just relaxed in child's pose. Try to keep the face free of any gripping. One more breath, get a little more rounded, and then step the foot in between your hands. And walk it a little bit to the left so you're not on a tightrope, and then really firm your left hip in, press the heel, and slowly come up to your crescent pose. So we just focus on this first, because that's where our balance lies. So it's a little wobbly at first, and you just keep pressing the heel, firming the hip, and then little bend in your back leg so that we can start to lean the torso back. So she's got this really nice action of her hip points rising and her front ribs, you can't even see them, they're melting to the lift of the hips. And then really working the energy of your arms, beautiful. So your back body feels taller. Now plant your gaze at one spot. See if you can start to slowly straighten your right leg. So for a lot of us, it's the most challenging part of the posture. As you straighten the right leg, give your right hip a little pull forward. And then, three more breaths. Start to lift up into the sternum. Keep trying to bend 90. Maybe look up. Wrap those triceps, palms touch. And then hands to the mat. Pause there. Be on your fingertips. Take a deep breath in, lengthen the spine. Keep your right arm where it is. 
Send your left arm up to the ceiling. And again, pay attention to your bottom arm. So you'll probably be able to feel it, the shoulders kind of collapsing towards the ear. Roll it back. Think of spinning. The inner arm forward, the outer arm back. So you feel more openness in your chest. And then give that top arm a huge reach up. Keep the essence of this in the upper body. Just softly bring your gaze down and step back to Vashistasana, sidearm plank. So find the stacking first, feet, hips, shoulders. Find your plank legs. And it's like the inner thighs pull back and you send your tailbone down to the heels. And then check in with that bottom arm again. Same thing it was doing in the twist. And then add the top arm, reach it overhead. This is a beautiful bracelet. Got distracted and <laughs> breathe. Wrap your tricep. Three more breaths. Can you open the chest a little more? Beautiful, guys. You can wrap your tricep more. <laughs> Makes me so happy, a nice wrapped tricep. And then bring your left arm up. Gently come back to plank, top of a push-up pause. Even grounding in the hands. Drop your hips, uncurl your toes. Two deep breaths in up dog. Maybe even close your eyes. Straight arms open wide in the chest. And these are very optional, these extra chaturangas. Chaturanga, oh, let's see if they both take it. Good, two breaths. Keep the belly and front ribs in. Inhale to plank. Excellent, pull it back to down dog. Take a nice big cleansing breath in through your nose and let it out your mouth. So a lot of the actions that we're doing right now in these standing postures are the same actions that we need in the harder postures or the more demanding ones of back bends. So look forward, step or float, feet to meet the hands. Just so you know there's a reason for all of these. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Circle your arms. Come all the way up to standing. Stretch. Lower your hands to your heart. Okay. Bend your knees, drop your hips, chair. Believe it or not, trust me, everything we do in chair are the same actions of a back bend. Your inner thighs are going to spiral down, and you're going to lengthen the tailbone, the buttocks, towards the backs of the knees. And then she's going to do the same thing as she did in crescent. Lift the hips, melt the front ribs, and then really work the arms. Wrap the triceps in. Beautiful. See if you can sit a little deeper. And now bring your sternum up, bring your gaze up. Bring your palms to touch. Keep your arms straight like arrows. And forward fold. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, deep breath in. Melt a little bit of the shoulder blades. And you're going to step the left leg back behind you. Drop your back knee, uncurl your toes. You can pad your knee if you need to. Otherwise, bring your arms up to low lunge. So low lunge. You bend nice and deep into the front leg. It's one of the few poses you can actually get the knee beyond the ankle. Okay? And then as you do that, draw the tops of your inner thighs together. Give them a little squeeze until you feel just the littlest bit of lift of your pelvis, stability in your pelvis. Press the top of the back foot down. Now interlace the hands behind your back. Index finger and thumb pointing down. And start to peel your chest up towards the ceiling. Breathe freely. Keep the inner thighs, tops of them squeezing a bit. Top of the back foot pressing. And feel any amount of your back body lifting to your front body. Beautiful. And then slowly reach the arms up. One breath up. All the way. And then hands to the mat. Curl the back toes under. Straighten the back leg. Step back to plank pose. Top of a push up. Inhale here. Shift forward. Chaturanga exhale. And then a deep breath to up dog. Shoulder heads back. Pull it back to downward facing dog. Smooth out the breath. Relax the muscles in the face. Again, no matter how intensely we work, not creating any tension. Look forward. End of your breath. Step or jump it. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Press the feet. Circle the arms. Come all the way up. Exhale. Hands release. Bend the knees. Drop the hips. Chair pose. I promise this is a good one for you. Pause. This time, we know the actions. What's relaxed here? Pick a point to gaze at. Make it gentle. Mm -hmm. Soften your toes. Relax all the little tiny muscles in the face. And then just acknowledge. Sit a little deeper. Press the heels. Mm -hmm. Feel the power and energy of your legs. Get a little energetic lift of your core like you're zipping it up all the way towards the back body and sternum. And then last two breaths. Reach the arms. Lift the gaze. Palms touch. And exhale. Let it go. Awesome.
Inhale, look forward, stretch and lengthen. Exhale, step your right leg back, low lunge. Drop the back knee and curl the toes. And then slowly reach your arms up. And you'll probably feel a big stretch in the right, kind of inner thigh, outer thigh, maybe all the way up here. There's this big psoas muscle that we want to open up for back bend. So have this back, bleh, leg bent nice and deep. Tops of the inner thighs draw together, just enough to feel a little bit of lift of your pelvis. Beautiful. Top of the back foot presses. And now interlace your hands, index finger and thumb. And energetically start to just move your back body. Picture the mid to upper back lifting into your chest without losing the top of the back foot and the inner thighs drawing together. Two more breaths. Keep lifting the back body up into the chest like you're going up and back over a limbo pole. And then slowly come to center. Reach the arms up for one breath. And then hands to the mat. Curl the back toes under. Straighten the leg. Step back to plank, top of a push-up, chaturanga, exhale, and then upward facing dog, inhale, pull back to downward facing dog as you exhale. Excellent, excellent work. Pause here, smooth out the breath, and then take a big one in, stretch your spine, look forward, empty your breath, step or jump, feet to hands. Inhale, lengthen, flat back, exhale, fold. Circle your arms, come all the way up to standing, stretch at the top, hands to the heart. Okay. Suri Namaskar B. Three rounds, and just flow with breath. Let it feel good, let your body open. Bend the knees, drop the hips, free up anything that feels caught. Exhale, forward fold. Look forward, stretch and lengthen your spine. Exhale, step or jump it back, chaturanga, empty the breath, and then Urdhva Mukha, huge breath in. Round the hands, Adho Mukha. For the first one, lift your right leg up behind you just for the stretch. Exhale, glide it forward. Pivot your back foot at an angle. Press the feet. Inhale, rise up. Look up, reach up. Maybe palms touch. And then exhale. Hands come down. Step it back. And lower on the same breath. And then inhale to back bend. Hands root. Exhale back. Left leg lifts on the inhale. Exhale, glide it forward. Pivot the back foot at an angle. Rise up, deep breath to the top, reach up, maybe look up, and then exhale. Hands come down, step it back, and lower on your breath. And inhale to back bend, and exhale, forward fold. Just look at your feet, spread your toes. You can draw the outer ankles in, and at the same time, press your big toe down and try to stretch the inner heel back. And then bend your knees, send your hips way up, long spine, step or float, feet to hands. Inhale, halfway Arda, exhale, fold. Bend your knees, drop your hips deeply, keep the gaze forward or up, Utkatasana, press to standing, and hands release, and we'll do two more times. Inhale to chair pose, breath in, bend deep, exhale, forward fold, firm the legs. Inhale, think thighs back, heart forward. Exhale, step or float, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, straight arms. Exhale, downward facing, no more leg lifts. Right foot forward, back foot pivots. Root down into the feet, rise up. Lean back, get a little more lift. And then exhale, step it back. Try to lower on the same exhale. Breathe deeply, no rushing any of the poses. Exhale, pull it back. Step your left foot forward. Pivot the back heel. Feet press. Rise as you inhale. Pause to lift. And then exhale. Vinyasa. Take it through. Keep breathing. Up dog and down dog. We all have different bodies. We all have different, you know, periods that we've been practicing. This might be a really challenging class to you. So if it is, Take breaks, maybe watch, rest in child's pose. So these guys make it look really, really smooth and easy. But the key to it, remember, is your breath and your approach. So keep the breath calm, keep the approach calm, and everything will unravel just in the way it needs to. So look forward, step or lightly jump. Inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, drop your hips. Utkatasana chair pose, sit into the heels. 
press to stand, hands to the heart center. One more, bend the knees, drop the hips, chair. Go a little deeper in the legs, a little higher in the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, find a little melting. Shoulder blades down and in the back, chaturanga. Exhale, pin the elbows in. Inhale, ground the inner hands, sternum up. Exhale, pull it back. Right foot forward, back foot pivots. Big breath, circle the arms, rise up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, hands to the mat, step it back and lower. Nice strong legs, upward facing dog. Pull it back, downward facing dog. Left foot forward, back foot pivots. Rise up, inhale, huge lift. And exhale, let it go, step it back. Flow through your vinyasa on your breath. And when you're in down dog, pause. Smooth out the breath. Firm the upper arms. Keep the hips rising. Feel the backs of the legs opening. And just acknowledge already how much you've done. The heat, the strength, the stretch, the openness, the space. And take a big breath. Stretch it back. End of your exhale, look forward, step or float, feet to hands. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold, bend your knees, drop your hips, chair pose, and press to standing. Beautiful, hands at the heart. Drop your arms by your side for just a moment, close your eyes. We're gonna take triangle pose to Ardha Chandrasana. So I'd like you guys to step your legs wide apart on the mat, I'm gonna actually have Papa grab a block for this one. He's going to place the block to the outside of his right heel. Float your arms out to the side. Rotate your right leg out 90 degrees. Spin your back foot in at a slight angle. And just pause for a moment. Press into the feet. Engage your legs to feel straight. And take a deep breath in. Lengthen the sides of your body and your spine. And then slowly exhale. Reach your right arm forward. Continue to lengthen the side body and spine. And then place your right hand down. Keep the legs nice and engaged. Top arm up. And pause. So there's this hinge joint in your right hip, and you can literally hinge it towards your left leg, and that allows you to continue to lengthen the sides of the body. Press into the ball of your front foot so your right quad's nice and engaged, and then keeping these areas strong and open, start to breathe a little bit more exhale into that top arm. Mm -hmm. Lift it up and spread your collarbones. And then bend your top arm behind you. And you're going to bring it to your right inner thigh. You might have to lift up a second to get it in there to wrap it. And place your right hand back down onto the mat or the block. And pause here. So remember those, that area of the front ribs and hip points lifting towards each other. I want you to do that again here as you firm your back leg a lot more. And then maintaining that, roll your left shoulder a little bit more over the right. So you have this just huge feeling of your chest being open. Look down. Bend your front leg. You're going to reach your block out a few inches in front of you, if you have the block and the pinky toe, and then slowly come up to Ardha Chandrasana, wrapped. So firm your right hip in. It's that same hinge joint. Firm your back leg a lot. Gaze down at first. Find that same kind of sensation of elongating the sides of the body and the spine. And then use these last two breaths wrapped again to open the chest and spread your collarbones. And then slowly float your left arm all the way up to the ceiling and really reach it up, almost making your right hand a little bit lighter. Either stay here or bend your back leg. So it's very optional. Grab the top of your foot. It's all optional. And then drop the knee in line with the tailbone. Firm your right side hip in. She does this beautifully. Move the shin back and open your chest. Feel any sensation of your back body lifting to the front body. Your front body lifting to the ceiling. Take two more breaths. Straighten that back leg, Papo. Reach your top arm up a little more. And then if you have the back knee, gently let it go. Come back to your full Ardha Chandrasana. And then look down. Bend your front leg. Slowly step back to triangle pose. Reach that left leg. Restraighten the front leg. Ground into the feet. Look down. Inhale. Come up to standing. Right foot in. Left leg out, we're going to travel with our block. <laughs> Left leg out 90 degrees, back toes in and a little bit of an angle, and pause. So root into the feet, firm the legs, and I want you to feel the side body evenly lengthening, spine nice and long. 
On your next exhale, gaze forward and slowly find that hinge again as you continue to elongate over the left leg. And then the hand will come down, the top arm goes up. It doesn't really matter where the hand comes down. What matters is that you've got this nice space and length in the sides of your body. So feel the feet press, feel the legs engage, and then open the chest a little more. Spread the collarbones nice and wide. Check in with your breath. Make sure it is smooth. Remember the muscles in the face and child's pose. Keep them nice and soft. And then we'll go into the wrap. So bring your top arm to the bottom inner thigh. You can come up to do it or you can stay down. And pause here. So just notice when we go deeper into the shoulders, we tend to lose a little bit of core, okay? A little bit of almost the feeling that we have a container in our center of a little bit of inner strength. So that's why I always say lift the hip points, melt the ribs, okay? Or drop the tailbone a little bit. So you feel that the movement's happening more from your upper body. So really start to spread wide, open the chest. And let's move into the balance. So look down, bend your front leg. Ardha Chandrasana, remember the block if you need it. And then slowly, 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 keep the left hip firming in. Keep your back legs straight. And you find that same little essence of a container almost, like the littlest bit of energy from your belly so that you move the right shoulder a little bit over the left. Gorgeous. And then reach your right arm up and really reach it. This part should feel good. Expand and widen. Either stay just like this, breathing, or bend your back leg, breathing, <laughs> chapasana. Once you get it, refirm the left hip. Nice. Keep the knee pretty much in line with the tailbone. Work the shin back. And then open your chest. Lift it up as high as you can. Two more breaths. Soft face, smooth breath. Even if you fell, always fall right back in. And then release the back leg slowly. As you do, flex the foot, reach the top arm again, and bring the gaze gently down. Step it back to your triangle pose. Find the back leg, and then firm the front leg. Lean back into it. Look down. Inhale, press up to standing. Parallel your feet. Bend your knees. Step or jump, front of the mat. I'm going to take Papo's block. He just doesn't like to travel with it and place it by the side. Okay, so we're ready for some really juicy twists, which open up basically the shoulders, thoracic spine, all the areas we want to move in our back bends. We're going to start with chair pose. Bend the knees, drop the hips. Utkatasana. This is the best one, in my opinion, because it's stable. Bring your hands to your heart, meaning you don't have to really worry about balance. Left elbow to right leg. The hips are square and twists. So if the hips are square, the spine gets even in length. This is the easiest one to know that. You look at your knees, make sure they're together. If they are, hips are square, gaze to your right. So now, challenge yourself. Sit a little deeper and elongate the side body and spine. Nice. You can stay with the hands like this. You can go into an arm variation if you want. We'll be here for three more breaths. As you exhale, roll that top shoulder open. Keep the inner knees together. As you exhale, spread wider into the collarbone, sit a little deeper. As you exhale, literally move your back body to the front, open the front, and then forward fold, let it go. <sighs> and then other side, bend the knees, drop the hips, chair pose, utkatasana, hands to the heart, right to left, elbow to knee. And again, when hips are square, we get length in the spine. So once you hook it in, Look at your knees and make sure they're together, that the right one didn't pop forward. And then sit deeply into the heels. And it's beautiful. Feel the length as you inhale. Feel the twist as you exhale. And do that a few more times. Lengthen as you inhale, soft face and toes. Twist as you exhale, movement in the upper body. Two more breaths. Keep challenging yourself. Stick with it. Open a little bit more as you exhale. Going somewhere else. Nice. Okay. And look down and forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, look forward. Elongate your spine. Exhale, chaturanga. Step or float. Inhale to up dog. Now one more standing sequence. Stick with it. Exhale to downward facing dog. So step your right foot forward. Stay in the ball of your back foot. Come up to crescent pose. Rise up. Inhale. And then bring your hands to your heart, and you're going to lean forward. Hook the left elbow to the right leg as you exhale. 
So always pay attention to the front leg for your balance. Ground the heel from the hip. Have your back leg very straight so the hips are square. And then again, lengthen your spine. So you kind of just energetically think as you inhale, elongate. As you exhale, twist. And then we do it repetitively. Inhale for length. Exhale to twist. Admire all your focus. Just one moment on the pose, on the breath, on what it's actually doing. Take one more. Squeeze out the twist a little bit more. And then hands to the mat. Pause. Straighten your front leg. Scoot your back foot in a couple of inches. Bring your hands onto your hips. Inhale. Come up to standing. I'm going to grab Popple's block for him. Twisting triangle. So if you're newer to this pose, or if, even if you're not, um, use a block inside or outside of the foot. So square your hips off to the front of the room. Press into the feet and firm these legs. And this is not going to move anymore. Inhale, reach your left arm up. Here's the movement. Exhale, forward fold. Place the hand inside or outside of the foot. Send your right arm up to the ceiling. Pause and breathe. Ground the outer edge of your back heel. And I want you to feel the right hip pull back and the left hip pull a little forward. Keep the back leg nice and strong. Now breathe length. Inhale, spine long. Exhale, twist from your upper body. Gorgeous. Keep firming the right hip in. Inhale, breathe long into the spine. I want you to think. Exhale, can you twist your rib cage a little? Awesome. Two more breaths. Lift that top arm up a little higher. One more. Ground the back heel. Lean back into the pose. And then look down. Oh, my back cracked. And release the top arm down. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale to come up to standing. Step your back foot to meet the front foot at the front of the mat. I'm going to make a hook. Grab the mound of the right big toe. Oh, no. You're standing. Never said fold. Come on up. Make a hook. Grab the mound of the right big toe. The other right one. Okay, we're good. And pause. So if you know you have tight hamstrings, I'm going to actually ask that you grab onto the shin instead of the big toe. Have your left hand on your left hip and pause for a moment. Firm your left thigh. Pick a point to gaze at that's not moving. And then slowly straighten your right leg any amount. You can work towards straightening and breathe. Keep firming your left leg. Find a little bit of energy from your core so you're not just leaning forward. But there's that little lean back and rise up. Now place your left hand, like Simon says, to the shin or the foot. Slowly bring your right arm back behind you. And you keep breathing. Even if you fall, even if you have to take a little pause, use the movement. As you inhale, firm the standing leg. As you exhale, twist a little bit more. Two more breaths. Think of the string at the crown of your head. Stand with really good posture for a moment here. And now bring the gaze back to center. Place your hands on your hips. Pause. Straighten your right leg. It's three breaths. That's one. Good. Reach your arms up for two. And now lift your right leg up one more inch. Arms up. What's happening here? And then <laughs> let it go. Arms by your side. Ah, <sighs> Tadasana. It's like Surya A to wipe the blackboard clean. <laughs> Inhale. Reach your arms up overhead. Exhale. Forward fold. Familiarity. Inhale. Look up. Exhale, step or jump, chaturanga. And then lower. And then inhale, up dog. And exhale, down dog. Come back to your breath. That's what keeps us here more than any muscle. Step your left foot forward. Stay in the ball of your back foot. Come up to your crescent pose. Inhale, rise up. And slowly exhale the hands to the heart. Lean forward, right elbow, left leg. Again, focus on the balance of the front heel, left hip. Have the back leg nice and straight. And as you inhale, feel the side body elongate. As you exhale, twist. So very slow but very deep movements you should feel. Keep the back leg nice and straight and lifted. Keep exhaling on your twist. Soften the muscles in your face. Feel what's very strong here but also what is moving mid to upper back, spine, shoulders, chest. One more breath. And then look down. Hands to the mat. Pause. Straighten your front leg as you walk your back foot in a little. Hands to the hips. Oh, good. He remembered the block. Inhale, come up to standing. And pause. 
So we take the time to set it up so that we're, we're stable, that we're balanced in it. So square your hips. That means you want to pull the left one back, the right one forward. And at the same time, press through the mound of your front big toe and the outer edge of your back foot. Then send your right arm up to the ceiling. Try to keep that as you exhale and fold. Hand comes down inside or outside of the foot. And then slowly, top arm comes up. So these twists are harder to balance in for obvious reasons. As you inhale, what do you think? Press the feet, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, stack your shoulders. As you inhale, square those hips again. Left one back, right one forward. As you exhale, stack the shoulders some more. Keep grounding the front toe, back foot, and maybe stack a little bit more of the rib cage, finding that twist from a little bit lower than the upper back. These look amazing. Stick with it. Take two more breaths. Reach that top arm as high as you can. Keep grounding the feet. Then lift your heart a little more. Chest up and look down. Then release it. Hands to the hips. Inhale to come up. Step your back foot to meet your front foot in front of the mat. Feet together. Okay, other side. Last standing pose. We're going to back bend. Make a hook. Grab the mound of the left big toe or the shin. And pause here. So the balance is always what's on the mat. Ground down through the right foot, firm the leg. Maybe straighten the left leg. Any amount doesn't have to straighten. And pause. You relax something at this point. Soften something. Stand tall. And then place your right hand to the shin or the outer edge of the foot. Send your left arm back behind you. And breathe. Doesn't have to straighten. Right leg is straight. Stand tall like you have really proud posture. Use the exhale to twist. Soft shoulder heads. Lifted sternum and crown of the head. Take one more breath. Then gaze forward. Pause. Hands to the hips. It's three breaths. Work it. Straighten both the legs for one. Reach your arms up for two. And then lift the leg a little higher, arms higher. And then let it go. Okay, another wiping clean of the blackboard. Surya A. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or jump it back through a vinyasa. Upward facing dog, breath in. Downward facing dog, breath out. And do one more shoulder opener before we back bend. My favorite. Come on to your knees, elbows, dolphin. So elbows in line with wrists. If that doesn't happen, Papa, will you show interlacing the hands together like this? Head is off the mat. Curl your toes. Lift your hips. And create length in your spine. So she's already walking her feet in, which is great. Some of you might not walk the feet in at all. You want to feel the inner wrists, the elbows pressing down, the upper arms firming in, and the upper back not rounded. You must imagine your shoulder blades like someone's hands are on them, and they're pushing them into the back, into the chest. But at the same time, you're firming the triceps. Keep the spine nice and long. Mm -hmm. Have your hips rising up. And breathe. Three more deep breaths. Keep lifting your hips up. Keep thinking shoulder blades melting onto the back, into the chest. And then walk your feet all the way back to plank on your forearm. And pausing here, and just release it all the way down and make a pillow and rest. Ah, we're so ready to back bend. <laughs> so very demanding, a lot of energy, attention, a lot of strength and things moving around. Switch the side of your pillow. And some days we have a ton of energy, we feel great and we can do a lot, other days we don't. So you, you show up, okay? You do whatever you can at any given moment of, of each day or each posture. I'm going to start with Shalabhasana and Ashtanga style. So that means arms reach back behind you, palms facing up, feet are together. <clears throat> okay, and pause. So the hands are going to stay down. I want you to very slowly lift the head, chest, and legs up. But lift your chest up more than your legs. So the legs lift just a little, enough for the feet to come up, maybe the shins, and they're straight. The sternum rises up. The hands stay pressing. 
Two more breaths like this. And again, this is for the back muscles to engage. It's not a huge back bend. Now, cobra, low cobra. Palms by your side. Keep the legs as they are. Beautiful. Now, you work the element of the back body almost like you're pushing it to the front body as you drag the palms to the back of the room. Keep everything as, as it is in your upper body. Release the legs down. Inhale, up dog. Huge breath. Chest up. Exhale, pull it back to downward facing dog. Beautifully done. Shift forward to plank pose, top of a push-up. Exhale, lower all the way down and release it. Most people have a bad attitude about this next one. Down your asana. I don't understand why. Bend your knees, reach back and pause. So the reason I do love this pose is because you use an amazing amount of your leg strength to get this huge sensation that literally, almost like someone's feet are at the thick of the back, pushing it into the chest. Someone's feet that are clean, that you like. So inhale, lift everything up, and see if you can feel that. So the shins move back, okay? The toes stretch up. You are literally melting the back body into the front body. Don't stop, take two more breaths. We're only doing one of them. And on the last breath, come right into up dog. Inhale, press down, rise up, exhale, downward facing dog. And then you're going to jump your knees between your hands or just kneel. Ustrasana, camel's pose. So I'm actually, yep, I'm going to use a block for Papa. Don't worry if you don't have one. He's going to place the block the long way or the wide way in between his feet and separate his knees, hips width apart. Bring your hands to your heart and just pause for a moment. Don't go anywhere. So press the tops of your feet down, okay? And imagine a block between your inner thighs that wouldn't fall. So you're not squeezing, but you're also not just letting them just be here. You want them engaged. So now start to lift your sternum up. Just start to breathe. Start to create a little space without much movement. Feet press, block between the inner thighs, Sternum rising up. Now, Papa's going to stay just right there. Breton's going to start to coil her thoracic spine into her chest so that she feels almost like there's a limbo pole. She's lifting up and over. And then both hands at the same time, they're going to reach back for her feet. Both hands at the same time. She continues to lift up as she reaches both hands at the same time. Breathe. This is at all troubling to your lower back. Get out. Take a child's pose. And then press down to come up. Lead with the chest. Beautiful. And sit back onto your heels. <sighs> and take a moment. And maybe take a time out. We're going to do one more. If you want to just sit on your heels like this, it's a great way to stretch the quads out. Otherwise, come on back up. Hands to the heart. So it's this sensation. Press down to lift up. And breathe. Coiling the spine into the chest. Legs nice and strong. Feet grounded. And then both hands at the same time, if you're doing that, reach back for the feet. Good. Keep lifting your chest. Three deep breaths. Imagine someone's hands on your thick of your back, pushing it into your chest, but you still have that block in between your legs. And then keep that lift. Inhale. Come up. And exhale, sit back down onto your heels. Ah. And we're going to make our way onto our back. So if you'd like to take one more vinyasa, you're welcome to. Otherwise, just swing your legs in front of you, lie down. Okay. And bend your knees. So I'm going to offer you a couple of options. Here's your block. Option one, we're all going to do bridge pose together. That's the only option for now. So press your feet, feet are hips width apart. Lift your hips up, interlace your hands underneath you. Have your feet parallel. So remember when I was yakking on about how good chair pose was for the back bends? Well, it's the same action here. The inner thighs roll down. The buttock flesh releases out of the back waist. Same thing that you do in chair pose. So you can stay in bridge or you can put a block underneath your sacrum in your lower back. Okay, the block can be this way. You can make it a little taller if that's more preferable. And then you're going to come down, all the way down. <coughs> Excuse me. Do that. 
You can do another two bridge poses or Urdhva Dhanurasana. So bring the palms of your hands by your ears if you're going to do that one. Come to the crown of your head and pause. Don't let the knees splay. Feel the strength of the legs again as if there was a block in between here. Now pause. Elbows in line with shoulders. Bring your shoulders onto the back without the elbows splaying and move that back body into the front body and press up, Urdhva. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful back bend. And breathe, breathe. That's the most important. One more breath. And slowly tuck the chin. Lower yourself all the way down. And we'll take one more. Okay. Don't overthink it. Set it up. Ready? Crown of the head for one breath. Find the shoulders in the socket, the movement of the spine into the chest. No splaying those elbows. Press down, come up, and breathe freely. We've worked our way up to this huge posture, which in my opinion is like the fountain of youth. All these back bends, and it's the opposite direction that the spine ages in. Okay, and slowly come down. Ah, lift your hip. Slowly come down, hug your knees into your chest softly. Just a little bit of rolling side to side, massage. And then take a twist. Keep your right leg in. Stretch your left leg out. Drop it all the way over to the side. And if you're still with me, I wish I, wish I was there with you right now giving you this adjustment. <laughs> It's very delicious. Come back to center slowly. Hug your left leg in. Stretch your right leg out. Drop it over to the side. Twist. Slow down. Notice the back bends are also super stimulating. They kind of um, benefit our central nervous system in a good way, but they can be very stimulating and the breath gets speeded up. So take these next few moments to really indulge in slowing down, unwinding, and calming all these systems that are cleansed and stimulated with all these poses. Come back up. Hug your knees in and roll yourself up to sitting. And both legs out in front of you. Bend your right leg in for Dhanur Shrasasana A. So sole of the foot to the inner thigh. Reach your arms up as you inhale. Take a little twist, navel to the left knee. And then exhale, forward fold. Again, I wish I could virtually be giving you guys these adjustments. So ground your right sit bone down. Lengthen your spine. Use each exhale to particularly soften something. Maybe it's an eye. Maybe it's a shoulder. Soften something, particularly after you work so deeply and intensely. Gently come up. And switch sides, right leg out, left leg in. Reach your arms as you inhale. Little twist, navel to knee, exhale, fold. Feel your left sit bone rooting. Feel your spine releasing. And again, see if there's something you can let go or soften. Space between the eyes. Maybe the exhale. Two more breaths. And slowly. Come on up. Hmm. Both legs out in front of you. All right. Reach your arms. Take a deep breath. Stretch up. Exhale, forward fold, Hashimotanasana. Inhale, look forward, get a little more length. Exhale, forward fold.
Relax your shoulders. Notice the breath probably already has slowed down quite a bit. With each exhale, find something you can let go of, relax, to create just a little bit of more softness in. Three more breaths. Slowly come up. Ah, line through your backs. Bend your knees. Just one moment of a hip opener. Cross the right ankle over the left knee. Just reach through the triangle. Squeeze it in. Flex your right foot. And then set the foot down. A quickie. And then switch sides. Ankle over knee, left side, squeeze it in. Just get those side hips. Flex both the feet. And then come into happy baby pose. Just ankles, heels over knees, squeeze it down. If you have the space and it feels good, you could grab the toes and straddle the legs wide open if you want. Soles of the feet, squeeze them in. Upside down, Baddha Konasana. Ah, I think we're ready for Shavasana. Hug both knees in. Mm. And set yourself up. Shavasana. Don't not do Shavasana. It's very important. <laughs> Take the time to set it up, even if it's just for a few moments. Have your palms facing up. And if it's helpful, take a generous breath in through your nose. And fully let it out your mouth. Mm. And have your eyelids so softly closed. And the back of your head and shoulders is completely supported by your mat. And just noticing the shift that takes place. When you do all of these different asanas, particularly heat building, back bends and twists, a lot of the systems in our body are cleansed and stimulated. And that all come back, it all comes back to a place of balance. So know that you can stay in your shavasana as long as you'd like. Reach your arms and stretch them back. And then hug your knees into your chest. And roll to your right. Make your way up to sitting comfortably at the front of your mat. And bring your hands to your heart and honor yourself. Every time you show up and you do this practice, drop your chin down. And gratitude, not taking it for granted. Lift your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. And as I always say, particularly in these more advanced practices, it's a practice. Stick with it, show up, and that's what makes a difference. And trust that it really, really does profoundly make a difference in changing your life. And when you have one of those days where you have an abundance of all that extra good stuff, try to share it with the people that you care about most. So hope to see you soon.